Warren, this is probably the first comprehensive study I've seen since the pandemic that takes a look at church multiplication. So based on what you see in the data, here's the key question I want to ask you today. Do you expect the number of multi-site churches and the launch of new locations to decline on the side of COVID? And the reason I ask that is because when we were in the heart of COVID, in the heart of the pandemic, I was hearing some concern that, well, maybe this is going to be a challenge for multi-site go going forward. So what are you seeing in the data? Okay, so my overall answer is no, we are not slowing down multi-sites or church plants, but let me unpack that a little bit. First, we had hundreds of responses from people during the pandemic, 2020, 21, and 22, who had either launched a, a new church or launched a new campus. And we'll get to some statistics mm -hmm. about it. You know, did the attendance dip and all? But that happened. Plus, during the pandemic, anyone who wasn't already online went online. Those who were online um, sophisticated it even further. So you have the equivalent of watch parties uh, happening all over where, well, why don't you just, you know, make that into a campus or watch from this home? There, there's far more variety now, which, you know, the joke was at, at one point in the pandemic, well, every church is a multi-site church because uh, we're, we're all <laughs> broadcasting into home. But even so today, uh, the variety and the momentum, I don't see it slowed down, even though the expressions of it are new and different in many ways. So, Warren, when we're working with churches that are considering launching a new location, one of the words of encouragement that we give them is they should shoot for a minimum of 200 people at launch to increase the likelihood of long-term health and success. Um, and honestly, if, if they can start with even more people, that's better. Uh, do you agree with that philosophy and coaching and why or why not? Well, the data affirms it, but let me come a back door into that because the vast majority of churches do not launch that big. And let me say that I just this little study that I talked about a minute ago where I took every single year of launch and asked, well, what did you launch with and what is your attendance today? Uh, you can imagine church that's two or three or four years old is is on average, the median size is going to be bigger and bigger over time. Well, it turns out that it, it inches up today at 73, 78, 98, 133. Back the 2004 launches on average cross 200 and the 2003 launches in the 2002. So, so in essence, at year 18, those churches that launched small, started small, on average, give it 18 years of persistence in trying to reach people for Jesus and make disciples. And on median average, you two will cross 200. Now, back to your question of the, if you will, the launch large and the start. Mm -hmm. um, yes, for several reasons. Uh, first, there's a momentum factor, a, a visibility factor, a volunteer factor. All pastors are more tired than they realize today, still coming out of the pandemic. Church planters who are wearing every single hat because they launched out of a hip pocket um, are, are more tired than others, are more challenged. Uh, and having that momentum, if you can at all launch large, having financial st sustainability. One of our charts says at what average size does the church become self-supporting and 76 is the magic number there on average you're able to be self-supporting if you have 76 people or more so for many different reasons the larger launch the more momentum the faster growth and we're assuming in all this that it's not sheep reshuffling but it's 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 a sizable percentage of new life in Jesus Christ. That's right. 
All right. Well, your new research looked at differences between single location churches with no intentions of multiplying and churches that have a big multiplication vision, whether that's through multi-site or church planting. And it looks like multiplying churches, if I'm reading your data correctly, multiplying churches are seeing more faith conversions, more people saying yes to Jesus. Did I read that correctly? You absolutely did. Um, it, okay. It's the size of faith expressed at this moment that in a lot of ways influences your trajectory. Now, I'm going to argue for them. Did those people for whom they're seeing spiritual fruitfulness already, are they the ones who say, great, God, please multiply this? Yes, I'm sure that's a part of it. But when you say, I took the two extremes on that question. I said, do, the question was, do you see yourself multiplying in the next five years? Now, I know the first church I planted, if I could just get to the next Sunday, you know, that, that was success. <laughs> and and I That's think right. that impacted our conversion growth because I thought so small. I thought too much survival and too little deploying of God's people and doing wild and crazy more things to keep relaunching the church to keep impacting our community. But uh, uh, we the question asked, okay, do you see yourself multiplying? And of those who wrote in the number zero, not just left it blank, but wrote, no, we're not going to reproduce ourselves at all in the next five years, versus those who wrote in the number 10 or more. It was an open-ended question to fill in. Uh, and I compared them. And yes, they both have spiritual fruit. That's wonderful. But by far more reported conversions in those that have the bigger dream and, and faith for what they believe God is doing and is going to do. All right, so let's get back to the information that I've already seen in the data that you've released. It looks like churches with multiple locations, if they're experiencing that growth, do you think that's because churches that are growing tend to expand in multiple locations, or is that because there's something about multi-site strategy that helps drive growth? I have wonderful news. I have the answer to that. Um, and I have that, I've done that in several studies because way back when multi-site, you know, first started mushrooming, for any movement, rightly so, people ask questions of unintended consequences. And will by mm -hmm. starting multi-sites, you know, is that going to dampen church planting? And, and as someone who's worked, been on staff and helped start both multi-site and church plants, I have a passion for both. And I wanted to see what's the answer. The answer is, if you do one, that fuels the other. And if you do the other, that fuels the one. So in other words, if you mm -hmm. are a church planting church, you are far more likely to become multi-site. If you are a multi-site church, you are far more likely to church plant new churches than if you were mm -hmm. just a single site church. So they fuel each other in a wonderful way. There isn't competition. Uh, so uh, in our research, this was fascinating. This is the first time I found this in the data that we were looking at. We found that about 60% of churches that have in-person attendance of 1,000 people or more are using a multi-site strategy. And that it surprised me. I, I knew there were a lot of larger churches that were now multi-site. I guess I didn't think the adoption rate was that high. Um, does, does that surprise you as well, Warren? Uh, not at all. Now, again, I'm leaving the ECFA survey data and I'm going back into all the multi-site uh, work in the books that, uh, Jeff Surratt, Greg Ligon and I did and the, the research behind that, which I've tried to track over the years. And here's what I see. The, the high visibility churches, which have planted a lot of campuses, uh, are the ones that that get the uh, get the press and the, and they set the patterns, but it's kind of like a pyramid. You know, those with twenty or more campuses are very few. They're at the top of the pyramid. Those with ten to nineteen campuses are in the next rung. Those that have eight to ten campuses on the next get, and the base keeps getting bigger and bigger. Well, the number of churches that have two campuses. You know, we we moved from downtown. Uh, to the suburbs, but we didn't want to give up either location. Or we have 
a college ministry, and so we want the campus near the, the college. Uh, we, it needs us. We need it. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's as far as we're going to go. There are a lot of churches that, that are a two campus multi site and they're very happy with it. Now, could their dreams be stretched to, to imagine more and to change their systems so that they, they keep starting new campuses? Absolutely. But, um, but, but that bottom of the pyramid has so many and has so many, um, churches represented and, with the passing of time, more and more churches are saying we can be multi-site and don't have to be really sizable. Well, Warren, I know a lot of pastors that want to continue to improve how they're engaging their mission in multiple locations. Is there anything else from your research that might help us improve the outcomes that we're experience, experiencing with our multi-site strategies? I want to affirm that this is the best time in our lifetime to dream creatively during the pandemic mm -hmm. you know before the pandemic it may take years to be able to make a change or to conduct an experiment in a type of outreach and when the pandemic happened it was like well we just can't do that anymore we, we need to consolidate this we need to reorganize that we need to try this and the openness to experiment and say okay we tried that for six months and it just didn't prove fruitful and for, for the congregation to go, well, so glad we tried, um, is a wonderful. So if nothing else came, I have a whole, I keep interrupting myself. I have a whole open-ended survey uh, question where I ask, besides the models we've set up of, of being entirely online or launching large or meeting in this way, uh, are there other things you've done? And the fill-ins to that were just so exciting. I'm going to do a special chart uh, just out of that. A lot of people are experimenting ways to make more and better disciples of Jesus. This is the time to do it. Um, dream big. And you have a, a, a spiritually receptive world as never before, uh, even though there are many other places they're looking for answers. But we can be that place if we bump into them in, in a relational way.